All right, Cherubs. In the years after the Civil War, the United States economy, driven in part by the technological leaps made during the war, was booming. There was a so-called age of optimism. Public works projects, unprecedented in human history, were being attempted all over this nation. This is the Brooklyn Bridge. When it was completed in 1883, it was the largest suspension bridge in the world, and to this day, it stands as a monument to humanity's ability to create a fixture in the landscape commensurate with the works of nature. But more than that, it demonstrates how we can use technology to bring people together. It is a bridge, in so many metaphorical ways that it's difficult to outline them all. But let's try. In 1883, its construction bridged history with the future. Bridge building before this primarily used material, like granite or concrete, with a strong compression strength. The job of the engineer was to build something that could withstand the compression of a heavy load on top. A load, in essence, trying to crush it. Material like granite does that very well. But this bridge was playing a different game. It's a suspension bridge, and it uses steel. Rather than compression, this requires tensile strength. The load carried by the bridge is trying to pull the building material apart rather than crush it. You'll also notice that the great bridges that come after this, like the Golden Gate Bridge, are entirely made of steel. By using both building materials, granite and steel, in this work, it binds the history of bridge building with its future. It also bridged history with the future by using gothic arches to direct our eyes up towards the heavens while we walk a solid path over the East River. Bridges are a metaphor for empathy and compromise, and in the years after the Civil War, the U.S. kind of needed that. The arches here, which invoke the architecture of cathedrals, inspire a reverence for mankind's ability to build bridges, both in the metaphoric way and the physical way. Here, the religious mentalities of previous generations are bridged in a work of fully modern engineering genius. And in this way, it bridges the arts and sciences. This isn't beautiful exclusively for its utility. It accomplishes that lofty goal of art, to make life easier to live. More than a hundred years later, it continues to bring busy New Yorkers to a contemplative halt just to say, damn it, that's a beautiful bridge. And in a metaphoric and very real way, it of course bridged two distinct cities, Brooklyn and Manhattan. Before this, they were two independent cities, but this bridge eventually facilitated the creation of the greater New York City area. In the same way that after the Civil War, people stopped referring to these United States and began saying the United States as a singular entity, the bridge connected the people of Manhattan and Brooklyn in a meaningful and singular way. New York City came to mean something larger with this bridge. By connecting the landscapes, the bridge expanded the New York City community. John A. Roebling, the German immigrant who designed the bridge, foresaw the artistic, spiritual value of this bridge even if he never saw it completed. In his original proposal for the project, he stated, its most conspicuous features, the great towers, will serve as landmarks to the adjoining cities, and they will be entitled to be ranked as national monuments. As a great work of art, and as a successful specimen of advanced bridge engineering, this structure will forever testify to the energy enterprise, and wealth of that community which shall secure its erection. In an earlier video, I claimed that the 19th century landscape paintings were asking whether the powers of science and technology would be used to pursue the path of our own destruction, or the path of compassion towards each other and future harmony between ourselves and nature. I think it's telling that more than a million glass plates containing photographic images of the Civil War were recycled and lost to posterity. But a bridge remains, and it continues to facilitate human connectivity. An early critic of the bridge, who failed to understand its artistic merit, stated that, the work, which is likely to be our most durable monument and to convey some knowledge of us to the most remote posterity, is a work of bare utility. Not a shrine, not a fortress, not a palace, but a bridge. If that statement proves prophetic, I think I'll be happy with that.
This video was made possible through generous support from Google's Making and Science Initiative. You can check out other projects they support by browsing the hashtag Science Goals and checking out their YouTube playlist linked here. If you like this video or want to get an update when I upload a new art history video, please consider subscribing. I also have dozens of videos like this on my channel. Thank you for watching.